Uh, my name is Matt Adamson and I'm the program manager for education and outreach. So what that means for me predominantly is uh, hiring and training our tour guides and we call them interpretive specialists. These are the people that give public daily tours of Biosphere 2. Uh, I oversee our social media. I am responsible for teacher professional development and training here predominantly during the summertime. So today, uh, being owned and operated by the University of Arizona, we have about 40 acres that includes the Biosphere 2 facility itself, a residential village where we host student and conference groups throughout the year, and then several administrative buildings that are used for office space and other meeting spaces for these conference groups that are here. Um, within the Biosphere 2 facility itself, we have a variety of wilderness biomes, so this would include things like the tropical rainforest, the tropical ocean, a savanna, a thorn scrub, a mangrove marsh, and a coastal fog desert. We would call those the wilderness biomes. Those, of course, are what visitors want to see when they're here. We also have some exhibit spaces that show what it was like when people were living inside, so uh, an original residence or quarters, one of the apartments, um, some lab spaces, and then quite a few exhibits for people to see when they're visiting. And then where the farm space was, so when people were living inside, they had a farm area. U of A, we have radically overhauled that space to contain our institutional research um, project or experiment, which is called the Landscape Evolution Observatory. For roughly 10 years, starting in the spring and summer of 2016, we'll use the Landscape Evolution Observatory to study the movement of water over complex landscapes. So in my opinion, there are two cool things about Biosphere 2. One is physical and one is philosophical. The physically cool thing is the ocean. You know, we have a 600,000 gallon saltwater ocean in the heart of the Sonoran Desert. So we've got the highest ocean in the world, 4,000 feet above sea level. It's pretty cool as far as the physical structure goes. Philosophically, what I like about Biosphere 2 is that it's an inspirational setting. So whether you have teachers coming here for training in the summertime, K-12 students coming here for a field trip with their classroom, this is a dramatic expression of imagination. So we're here in the ocean biome of Biosphere 2. We're standing on the beach of a 600,000 gallon tropical ocean system. When the ocean was built in the early 1990s, 100,000 gallons of seawater was trucked in from off the coast of San Diego, poured into this system, and that was really to inoculate the ocean with microorganisms, plankton, all of the small things you want living in an ocean environment. At that point, the rest of the ocean was filled with fresh water and thousands of pounds of instant ocean, just like you would use to set up a saltwater aquarium at home, and that was to give it the right salinity and pH. And to this day, we check salinity and pH daily to maintain this as a tropical ocean marine environment. And not many people are aware of this, but it's one of only two bodies of water in the state of Arizona where you can get your open water scuba certification. So you can learn at Lake Pleasant up in the Phoenix area or in the ocean at Biosphere 2. Well, we're here in the tropical rainforest biome, and what you can't see is that it's about 100 degrees and 100% humidity. This is supposed to simulate an environment like you would find along the Orinoco River in Venezuela. So there's a huge diversity of plant communities. Uh, many of them have huge leaves, and that's because in a rainforest, plants have evolved to capture the few available photons of light that are making their way to the forest floor. Over my shoulder, you can see our waterfall, which is the beginning of our freshwater stream system that wends its way through the rainforest, the upper savanna, and then ultimately gets recycled and pumped back through the system throughout the day. There are fish in the freshwater system and crayfish. One thing I think that fascinates visitors to Biosphere 2 is the notion that you step through a doorway into another world. There's really no other place on Earth 
where you step through a door and you're experiencing a 600,000 gallon tropical ocean, or you're stepping into an acre plus of a tropical rainforest system, or experiencing a savanna, something like you'd have to travel to East Africa to experience in the real world. So Biosphere 2 truly is this model, this world under glass, that's an attempt to replicate our world, Biosphere 1.